Hey, what's going on? In today's video, we are going to install the Home Assistant Community Store, aka Hacks. Then after the installation, we'll go over how to use Hacks to easily add and configure custom cards and themes in Home Assistant. Let's get right into it. So what is Hacks? The Home Assistant Community Store is an add-on for Home Assistant. It provides a web interface where you can easily discover and install custom elements like custom cards, themes, and also custom integrations. The installation of hacks in Home Assistant is simple. You will need to use a terminal and run one command to download and install it. In this guide, we'll be installing hacks in the Home Assistant OS version. However, the installation process on other versions of Home Assistant is almost the same. The terminal that I'm going to use is the one included in the VS Code add-on. We're also going to use VS Code to access the Home Assistant configuration files, so definitely install it if you don't have it set up yet. Alternatively, you can also install hacks using the SSH and Web Terminal add-on. To open the terminal in VS Code, click on the menu icon in the top left corner. Go to Terminal and then click on New Terminal. The terminal automatically opens inside the config folder. So type cd and press enter to change the directory. After that, run the following command to install hacks. When the installation completes, you will need to restart Home Assistant before you move forward with the configuration. So in the terminal, run the command ha core restart. After Home Assistant reboots, to configure hacks, go to configuration, integrations, and click on add integration. Then search for Hacks and click on it to add it. A pop-up comes out where you need to acknowledge that Hacks has no add-ons and that all elements available are custom and untested by the Home Assistant developers. Also, for troubleshooting purposes, you need to know how to access your Home Assistant logs and that you need to disable all custom components to pinpoint the cause of any issue. So check all the boxes and then click on Submit. Next, you need to register your device with Hacks, so copy the code provided and click on the link in step 1. The GitHub page comes out where you'll need to sign in or create an account. If you're already signed in into GitHub, the device authentication page comes out where you'll need to enter the code provided in Home Assistant. Click on Continue and then Authorize Hacks to access your GitHub account. After the device is successfully connected, go back to Home Assistant and on the pop-up click on Finish. The Hacks web interface should now be available from the sidebar. If it doesn't show up, you can just refresh the page. Alright, so Hacks is all set and you can now start adding custom cards, themes and custom components. Let's go over a couple of examples so you have an idea of how to use Hacks for the first time. There is a very popular custom card called Mini Media Player. With this card, you can set up media player entities in a more compact way than the regular media control card in Home Assistant. It also comes with other features that allows you to change the appearance of the card. To install a custom card, go back into Hacks, click on Front End, click Explore and Add Repository, and search for Mini Media Player. Click on it to open it, and then click on Install this repository in Hacks. A pop-up comes out where you can select which version you want to install. Leave it set to the latest version and then click on Install. After you install the card, click on Reload to refresh the Home Assistant page. Next, click on Repository to go to the Developer page. The repository will have details on how to set up the custom card and the variables that you can use to customize the card appearance. To add the custom card to your Home Assistant web interface, go to the dashboard Click on the menu icon on the top right, click on Edit Dashboard, and then Add Card. Some custom cards have a visual editor to add and edit the cards easily. However, for the custom card that don't have it available, you will need to configure the card using the manual card. The Mini Media Player card does have a visual editor. However, the functionality is limited. So depending on how you want to customize the card, you might need to change to the code editor to add some of the variables. When you open the Mini Media Player card, you can easily configure a few settings in the visual editor. Some of the examples are that you can select the entity that you would like to display, set up a name and an icon for the entity, and also customize how you would like the artwork to show. Now, let's say you don't want the volume slider to show to make the card even smaller. 
the mini media player card does have that option available. However, you will need to switch to the code editor and manually add the variable as follow. One of the bad things that I noticed with a custom car is that it doesn't show in the live preview when you make changes to the car. I'm not sure if it's like that for all custom cards, but I did notice it with this one. You will have to save the car to see the changes that you make. Not a big deal, but definitely something to have in mind. Now let's go over how to install themes. Home Assistant has a dark theme available besides the default light theme, and you can change the primary color and the accent color for both themes. However, that's all the customization that you can make directly from the web interface. If you want to change, for example, the border of the cards, remove the cards drop shadow and other things, you will need to create a theme that will make all the customizations for you. There are many good themes available via hacks that you can easily download and use in your Home Assistant instance. However, to add custom themes, you must configure a couple of things in Home Assistant. Go into VS Code, and in the config folder, open the configuration.yaml file. Then enter the following anywhere inside that file. Save the changes and then create a new folder called Themes. After that, reboot Home Assistant to apply the changes. After Home Assistant is back online, to add a custom theme, go back into Hacks, then go into Front End and click on Explore and Add Repositories. To view just the themes that are currently available, uncheck the Loveless option at the top. There are a few themes that I created myself. If you would like to download one of them, you can search for Quantum Tech to get a list of the themes. Click on the theme that you would like to download and then click on Install this repository in Hacks. Then on the pop-up that comes up, click on Install. And that's it. If you open VS Code and check the Themes folder, you will see the new theme downloaded. Now to apply the theme, go to the Profile tab and then under Theme, click on the drop-down to select the custom theme. If you want to use a light theme and a dark theme, you can set up Home Assistant to automatically switch between the two when you change the mode on your computer or mobile device. To set it up, go to the Developer Tools and click on Services, search for frontend.set underscore theme, then below you have two options, Name and Mode. Under Name, enter the name for the theme that you would like to set. Then under Mode, select either Light or Dark and then click on Call Service. After that, do the same process to set the theme for the other mode. Then go back to the Profile tab and change the theme to Backend Selected. If you try to change the mode on your computer, Home Assistant will automatically switch between the two themes. Hacks has many different custom cards, themes, and components available to add to your Home Assistant. However, do have in mind that everything available in Hacks is untested by the Home Assistant developers. If you ever have a problem with your Home Assistant instance, the first step to troubleshoot is to disable all custom elements so you can check if they're causing an issue. Alright guys, that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I'll see you in the next video.